piston driven perfection. And just like that, that's the end of this video. Seriously though, that could easily sum up this entire video into one sentence. Over the years, Sig Sauer has become a household name, and even more recently with the Army's adoption of the new Sig Spear as the next gen service weapon. Personally, I have been hit and miss with Sig, until I got my hands on the Virtus. Today, we're checking out one of my new favorites, the 9 inch MCX Virtus chambered in 300 blackout. More than just pure eye candy, this short stroke piston system will make you fall in love with guns all over again. 300 Blackout is one of those cartridges that not everybody agrees on. Personally, I think it has a purpose and can yield some great results under the right conditions. Before I start a war in the comments section about which caliber is best, let's focus on the firearm itself. First off, I have to give a huge thank you to Black Dot Ammunition. They supplied the ammo for today's video. Black Dot has been a long time channel sponsor, and without them, these videos wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to pick up some quality ammo at an affordable price, head over to their website and use my discount code 715TACTICAL at checkout to save even more money on your order. Let's dive in. If you have been on the hunt for an MCX Virtus, you've probably realized that they are a hot commodity in the gun community. Yeah, you can find them on sites like Gunbroker, but for an extremely high price. I was lucky enough to find this one close enough to MSRP and jumped on it right away. No, this was not given to me or sponsored by anyone. And yes, I did pay $2,400 for it. With that out of the way, let's follow our usual review routine starting at the front and work our way to the back. The MCX Virtus comes with a three prong flash hider, which honestly, I can't say much about because I immediately took it off and replaced it with this Q Cherry Bomb. I had no intention of running this thing without a suppressor. With SIG's 5 ace by 24 threaded and tapered muzzle, I knew that the Cherry Bomb was the right way to go, especially owning a few Q suppressors. If you want to run a can that doesn't have tapers, SIG includes a special taper ring which allows you to mount to the standard 90 degree shoulder. I really like the tapers, and here's why. First off, it keeps everything concentric. The chances of you having a baffle strike significantly decrease. Another place that it shines is keeping the carbon buildup off of the threads. If you have ever carbon locked a can to a barrel or muzzle device, you know how bad it sucks trying to get that thing off. This totally eliminates that problem. I'm running a Q Trash Panda and have been extremely happy with it. This can has a great tone for its length along with really good flash suppression. The 9 inch barrel is cold hammer forged and made of carbon steel. This barrel really shines with its 1 in 5 twist rate. You see a lot of 300 blackout pistols with the 1 in 7 twist. That faster 1 in 5 really helps stabilize those heavier subsonic loads. That was a huge selling point for me with the Virtus. When it comes to barrel lengths for 300 blackout, well, we could make an entire series on that, but 9 inches is pretty much the sweet spot. That's what she said. SIG does offer shorter barrel options, like on the Rattler, which I think is 5 inches. That's extremely short, but even with that, you can still make good shots thanks to that 1 in 5 fast twist rate. I have a Q Honey Badger, which has a 7 inch barrel, and I'm waiting on a Form 4 to clear for a Nevesky Ghetto Blaster SBR with an almost 8 inch barrel. I didn't want to add another shorter barrel to my 300 Blackout collection, so I decided the 9 inch was the route to go. This barrel has been on par and has yielded straight up accuracy. SIG also offers caliber exchange kits for the Virtus. They have a really innovative system that allows you to switch out barrel assemblies fairly quick. If you want to switch to 5.56, no problem. The barrels have the gas block assembly built in and have two gas options. You're able to turn the gas adjustment with the tip of a bullet and while the handguard is installed. Being able to switch to those settings on the fly is very useful. Let's talk about handguards. The cool thing about the MCX Virtus is that it is extremely modular. SIG claims that the Virtus can be configured in more than 500 different combinations. From different caliber barrels and lengths to different handguard options. You can set this thing up pretty much any way you need. This one shipped with a 9 inch M-Lock handguard, but I switched it out to SIG's 12 inch SD handguard to be able to tuck my suppressor a bit. I love the look of integral suppressed guns. With the 1.75 inch diameter of the Trash Panda, it's hard to find the bigger handguards to fit over it. SIG makes their SD handguards with a 2 inch internal diameter. Now, this thing is thick, and I mean white girl from Wisconsin thick. 
While being a bigger handguard, it is still very usable and fits my hand fairly well. One thing to keep in mind while running a suppressor tucked inside the handguard, during heavy use, your can is going to get extremely hot, and that heat transfers to your handguard. It can get to the point of being uncomfortable to hold. I experienced that and put on this multi-cam rail wrap from Burnproof Gear. It does a fairly good job at shielding your hand from the heat. Be careful what kind of attachments you are using as well. A lot of your lighting control switches and other polymer accessories can start to get a little toasty. Switching out handguards is pretty easy with the Virtus. Simply pop the front takedown pin and slide it off. When I first saw this, I had questions, and I'm sure you do too. Like, if I mount a laser on the front, how well is it going to be able to hold zero? After a few hundred rounds with a D-ball I squared, the zero was still maintained. The way that the handguard locks in on the upper side rails, I think that really helps keep it stable. This is in SIG's concrete gray finish, just like the rest of the Virtus. Personally, I think this color looks badass. It really caught my eye the first time I saw it. Also built into the handguard are QD points, one on each side. I'm glad they included those, and the placement is perfect for me. I like running my QDs farther back on the rail, so for me, it works out great. The monolithic upper receiver on the Virtus is nicely done. Almost monolithic. I say almost because of this little bit of Picatinny that is left on the top of the handguard. Similar to Q's Honey Badger, the upper receiver is milled to accept PDW style braces or stocks, if you're into that type of thing. The upper also has a forward assist. Now, the location of the forward assist is placed closer to the ejection port, a little closer than what you would find on a normal AR. It kind of reminds me of BCM's Mark II upper receiver, with their forward assist closer to the port. I know BCM did that to help with gas blowback while running suppressed. Maybe SIG did the same thing, but I can't say for sure. Sitting inside the upper receiver is what most would consider the heart and soul of any rifle. This is SIG's bolt carrier group, which features tapered lugs. With this being piston driven, the bolt carrier group stays relatively clean even while shooting suppressed. This is after 500 rounds suppressed, and it doesn't even come close to how your DI bolt carrier group would look after the same round count. Also, with piston systems, it runs much cooler. The ambi charging handle that ships with the Virtus is subpar in my opinion. I ordered this Radiant Raptor from Brownells, and it makes all the difference. The latches on the stock charging handle are just too short for me. The $100 upgrade? Well worth it. The Virtus doesn't come with any sights, so it can be considered optic ready. I decided to throw on a Trigicon MRO HD, courtesy of Optics Planet. The MRO HD is a fantastic little dot. Super clear glass, great runtime, night vision compatible, and selectable reticles. If you want to pick up your own MRO HD from Optics Planet, you can use my discount code 715TAC at checkout and save some money on your order. This is sitting on a Reptilia 1.93 inch mount. I opted for the higher mount to aid in shooting with night vision. The higher your optic sits, the easier it will be to look through with nods. I run a ton of Reptilia mounts and I've never had any issues with them. They're really well made, the price is right, you can't go wrong with these guys. I would recommend that you check them out and give one a try. When you look over the lower receiver, you'll notice a lot of similarities to the AR-15. The Virtus has an ambi mag release, an ambi 90 degree safety, and your bolt release found on the left side. If you're used to the AR platform, you're going to feel right at home. I really wish SIG would have integrated an ambi bolt release. Not sure why everything else is ambi and they left that out, but that's one significant change I would like to make to this gun. Let's talk about this trigger. This is SIG's Match Light Duo Trigger, and let me tell you, it feels great. It's a two-stage trigger that breaks at about 5 pounds. Not too heavy, but also not too light. The take-up is minimal, which comes to a distinct wall. When you push past the wall, you get a very clean break and a super short reset. Alright, let's go ahead and enjoy this trigger porn. SIG definitely did it right with this trigger, and it adds to the shooting experience of the Virtus. For SIG's pistol grip, I was pretty happy with it. Usually one of the first things I do to a rifle is switch out the grip. 
I haven't done that with this one yet. It doesn't have an exaggerated angle, which usually forces your wrist to cramp. This is more of a vertical grip and also has a decent texture right from the factory. You'll see more QD points at the back of the lower. They work, but definitely not in my preferred location. I'm a fan of having my rear QD at the end of the stock or brace. This works fine, but if I had a choice, they'd be integrated into the brace. At the very end of the lower receiver is a 1913 pick section for mounting different braces or stocks. Brilliant. I absolutely love the 1913 mounting option. The Virtus doesn't need a buffer tube to operate, which gives you the ability to have a folding stock. This thing folds right up, which gives you a very compact firearm. Unlike your ARs with folding adapters, you can shoot this with your brace or stock in the folded position. Okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room. This godforsaken, hideous piece of shit. The SIG pistol brace. WHY ARE YOU SO FUCKING BAD?! SIG, I have one question for you. How much crack did your engineer smoke when they designed this thing? I can see it now. And the last uh, thing that we need is them getting together and saying, oh, listen, they made fun of us. Like, it's going to make Stratton look bad. That's why I love me. you. You think of shit like that. But that is they come in, we treat it just like one of us, okay? That's one of us. Gobble, gobble, one of us. We <laughs> accept that one of us. Gobble, gobble. This little creation is the worst pistol brace I have ever used. From the flipping to the spinning to the slapping, it's pure aggravation when you use this. You might think I'm being a little tough on this brace, Absolutely not. This thing irritated me so much that on the first day of owning this, I submitted a Form 1 to make this into an SBR. Naturally, the ATF still hasn't gotten around to the approval, but one day, one day this Virtus will be perfect. I picked up this minimalist plus folding stock from SIG and can't wait to see how it feels once my Form 1 is approved. Let's cover my final thoughts of the 300 Blackout MCX Virtus. Piston driven guns have always been cool to me. For the simple fact of running much cleaner and cool, suppressed and unsuppressed settings, and straight up reliability. The Virtus is no exception to any of that. I really like the recoil impulse of this gun. Piston guns usually hit just a bit different than DI guns when it comes to recoil. Throw on a suppressor, and you have one smooth shooting firearm. Gas blowback when running suppressed subs was very minimal. My friend and I put through some suppressed supers, and that was a bit of a different story. It was a bit gassy, but still manageable. With the subsonic ammo, I wasn't taking hits of gas to the face. This gun really shined for me when running it at night under a PVS-14. I had so much fun with this thing, it was hard to put down. Running in conjunction with the Q Trash Panda really makes for a hearing safe platform with very little flash signature. I know Kevin Brittingham of Q and SIG have some dirty history, but I feel like the Trash Panda was just made for this gun. One thing that I am going to mention is that the Virtus is a fairly heavy gun. It comes in at 7 pounds unloaded. Add in a full mag and whatever accessories you decide to put on, it really adds up. Ounces equal pounds and you definitely start to feel it. Accuracy with the Virtus was exceptional. SIG has made a quality barrel and it shows on paper. Reliability was 100% through the 500 rounds. The Virtus didn't skip a beat and ran like a bat out of hell. I think this gun is worth every penny of the $2,400 price tag, and I know people don't hesitate to spend more than that. I hope you guys were able to take something away from this video or simply enjoyed the show. As always, thank you for stopping in, stay vigilant, and I will see you next time.